Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced and underproduced Amiga channel. Uh, and what we're doing here today, tonight, or wherever it is we might be in the world at this particular moment, there was a lot of uh, noise and chatter about the usage of the web browser in the last video. Facebook socials uh, blew up with people just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, eyebrows, this is so great, I forgot all about eyebrows, or I didn't realize eyebrows was even still a thing. Uh, so I wanted to make another uh, video, uh, hopefully not too long video, just showing off some more eyebrows and how it works. Now, of course, you know, thanks to the wonderful world of CCS and a bunch of other HTML things I will never understand and far too baffling for me to ever comprehend, There, uh, there's a lot of websites you can't go to, but... You do get um, some decent compatibility. Uh, it does have uh, SSL support. There's a package you can download if you go to eyebrows here. Um, one of the things I wish you could tell it to do in preferences is to maximize these windows on open. It does not seem to do that. But yeah, they have these uh, packages here. In fact, they even tell you right here. Uh, back in May, they released the 68060. I'm sorry, they released a fix for the 68060, things you can do to fix uh, if you're not getting images showing up. And then you mentioned Eyebrows 256 and Amy SSL version 5, which is really cool. Once again, yeah, you cannot purchase Eyebrows uh, from your Amiga. You have to be on a uh, Mac or PC or Linux system. It won't work through this thing, probably, again, because of all those things that I don't understand about the Internet. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say up front is when you install Eyebrows, it does install... Um, it, well, it does, first off, it doesn't install uh, Amy SSL. You need to download this separately, and they give you all the links here. And then you download that and uh, get it installed. It's pretty easy. Just they walk you right through the installer. But it does install itself configured as uh, for an Amiga. So the, 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 if you go to like um, like the settings here, right? And you need to have MUI installed, by the way. Um, um, and if you go to the download here, let me see. So they give you all these links. Yeah, they give you the links for MUI. I installed MUI 3.8 because, you know, this... I know there's all these other versions of MUI and people love them, but this is the only one that ever seems to work for me. Like it, I never have problems with it. So I installed the good classic MUI. I actually bought a key for this and I still have it and use it. So I've got my MUI key. I now have an eyebrows key. Uh, and uh, heck, I even have a WHD load key. I bought that WHD load key and like two months later he made it free. Go figure. I waited 20 years to buy it and that's what happens. So yeah, you've got your MUI settings here, but you've got your main program settings. And what I want to talk about this is set up for like your standard, you know, 68020, probably my guess is they're thinking you've got two megs of chip RAM and maybe two or four megs of fast memory. So they're pretty conservative settings. You're gonna wanna go through here and you're gonna wanna fiddle with things. He does give you a lot of options here to what, what you wanna actually show at startup. Like one of the things I'd like to say is always maximize windows on open. I'd like to have that option here. Uh, the directories, I did change the default download directory to work downloads. So I created that downloads folder. Uh, things I'll never understand. I haven't really messed with this too much. You can turn off. There's all these little whiz bang gizmos you see down here that will do things when you click on stuff. You can control how much of that's being shown here. These buttons up here are rather large, but uh, one of the things that I noticed right away is like you want to play with these uh, JPEG settings. So it's set pretty conservatively. Like the memory limit for JPEG decoder, I think was down at like one megabyte or two megabytes. I just cranked it to eight. All my Amigas real and fake have anywhere. Actually, let me think for a second. I think all my Amigas have a minimum of 32 megabytes of memory and some of them have 128 megabytes of memory. I, uh, yeah, actually, you know, I take that back. I think my Amiga 4000 has 16 megabytes of fast memory only. So, but anyway, you can turn this up. Oh, by the way, if we go to Google, look what I'm doing, by the way, I'm going G O O G L E dot com. Yes, Q, you can spell Google, but I'm just doing Google.com. You don't have to type anything else. And it just, it's not, it's smart enough you know, to do that. And then I go to my, my image search and I type in, you know, um, Mustang and we get these images now. So somebody pointed out, this is cool that this is works. And again, this is an AGA Amiga setup with 256 color mode. When you install eyebrows, it gives you the option to install a 24 bit version. If you have an RTG card uh, for this particular case, I'm just doing the 256 color version. So that's why you're seeing this kind of dithering. But see how the background is this, this gray Amiga gray or whatever. Yeah, it kind of junks up this page because most default websites are white. Well, you can fix that if you go into preferences settings. We go back down here to uh, HTML. Here it says background color. You can actually just make it like, you, know, you can, well, they call it shine. You can pick shine, click okay, click okay, click okay. 
and then let's do a reload and there you go so you've got the white background now it looks a little more familiar maybe a little more modern web browsery looking that's that's a nice little fix that's one of the little things you can do but uh i'm getting so sidetracked because there's so many options and again you need you folks need you got to go through here and just click on all these buttons here's another important one under html images use fast mem for images well yes because otherwise it will try and by default this is not checked on because it doesn't know if you have fast memory or not it will just try and jam all of the images into fast into your chip memory and you will quickly run out and crash and freeze and you'll be like well this is a terrible web browser so you want to use that fast memory and you want to make sure you check on this use fast memory for images you can decide if you want it to play gifs slash gifs however you say it here whether you load images or not um you know which is kind of cool image maps and none all so you've got some control here again this is this this browser is designed to be as flexible as possible for all the types of Amigas that someone might have. So they're really trying hard here. You know, the palette fast, best grayscale. You know, this isn't a souped up Amiga. I'm gonna switch this to best. I love Floyd Steinberg. That's what it's currently using. It's cool that you can tell it not to dither the background. So that's fun. Progressive JPEG support. And you can use, it's got these internal decoders for these image formats, which is pretty neat actually, but you can switch it to an external. So if you have a, a data type that you prefer to decode these types of images, you can do that over here. And then of course, JavaScript, which I still don't understand all these years later. So by the way, here's the toolbar thing. Display as images and text. Okay, display as text. So I'm, I'm switching that to text. Okay, anyway, cache, another important one. I set it to 50 megabytes. I didn't know this is how much you know this cache it's going to use. Obviously you could probably crank this as long as you've got enough space. And then your image cache, I mean, for memory, I've got 18 megs of image cache. Pages, I mean, you could turn this up. Honestly, you, if you've got like one of these ridiculous Amigas with eight gigabytes, I mean, you can just crank this all the way up, I guess, and save yourself a lot of caching grief and reloading pages. So we'll go ahead and click okay. And yeah, there we go. So now I've got my little small, but so my screen real estate is really precious right now because this is a standard high res interlace screen because I'm not doing RTG. So yeah, it's nice to get these smaller buttons here. I know the, the bigger buttons look pretty, but man, they take up a lot of space. Now this is gonna take me to a real website. It's like, I say quote unquote real website. I have no idea what's gonna happen here. You're seeing it. This is probably the real reason you clicked on this video is to see, well, how does this damn thing work going to actual websites besides AmyNet, the website you showed or you know archive.org. Well, here we go. It's doing its thing. Now, because I've set those cache values up and I've set it to use fast memory, it's gonna be going through here and just, uh, bombing my fast memory with stuff and it, look it actually loaded the page without crashing it's still thinking it's still going and remember this is a amiga 4000 aga ntsc with a 50 megahertz 68060 and it is running at real you know 50 megahertz 68060 speed so you're seeing firsthand even with that kind of power the speed of the wonderful internet on the amiga in this uh in this manner so it's fun. I like doing it. It really is most convenient for AmyNet, archive.org, just grabbing things quickly without having to do a sneaker net, right, to, you know, to, to your Amiga. If, you, if your Amiga is online, it's it's really fun to do that. It is neat to be able to go off and, and look at websites like this and, and explore the web. But I mean, obviously, as you can see, it's, it's not, um, beyond the curiosity, it's not really practical. You're going to be kind of waiting a long time. And even then, when it's done, you're kind of left with like the world's most basic uh, internet. One of the things I did learn from posting my previous video is that I guess Roadshow is the only one that's compatible with this. I could be wrong. Anyone watching this video, uh, you know, if you wanna look at the comment section below or look at the comment section of my previous video to this one, people were talking about um, what it's compatible with. I think it might be Roadshow. And I know Tenmark, uh, Doug uh, has a, a video on it. I will, uh, try and uh, remember to put a pop-up here for it. And then I'll put, of course, I'll put the link in the description where he actually goes over the process of installing and configuring like the TCP IP stack for your, uh, your Amiga, which you have to get. Otherwise you're never even gonna get this far. Let's do something fun, right? Let's go to like, oh, I don't know, YouTube. Scotty, I need warp speed in two minutes or we're all dead. It got to 1.3 of 1.4. And this is how all of life works. We get right to the edge of completing and being successful. And then ultimately we fall on our face and fail. And there it is, YouTube. All right. Uh, we know that, uh, we knew that YouTube was never gonna work and Facebook's never gonna work and he's still gonna try and go there. So here we go. Eh, I mean, I'm not gonna log in, but 
that's uh, interesting that it takes you that far. Now let's go to WMBF. I know this is all terribly exciting, but you know, look, I'm saving you the hassle, right? If you don't want to bother with this, you're like, I don't want to have to go pay for the full version. I don't want to have to set up my Amiga to get on the internet just to see what this, I'm doing it for you. Here you go. Hey, look at that. You can see pretty quickly that the conclusion is if you're going to browse like late nineties, early two thousands web, you're probably okay. And you know, you, you think I'm being sarcastic, but there's a lot of websites out there that are still engineered for that kind of early two thousands HTML setup. And there are websites explicitly for the retro community that are set up that way to accommodate us crazy folks. But, you know, here you go. Oh, look, this there's actually images loading. Myrtle Beach Fire Department kicks off Public Safety Day event. So this stuff's working. This is also why it's taking some. These are, look how big these images are, by the way. This poor Amiga is having to chug through these big, big, big JPEGs. Uh oh, scary man. There's the scary man. Let's escape. So, of course, Amiga Org... Designed for this, it's fine. So if we go to AmigaWorld.net, is that still a thing? Q, you don't know about AmigaWorld.net and you call yourself an Amiga fan? I wanted to go to this this Amiga West thing and there's like an Amiga East thing. I didn't even know about this. I was so out of the loop on this stuff that I'm, I'm like, I, ugh. look, there's even a poll. The poll works. Yeah, how about that? MacRumors.com. I mean, as you can see, you, you do get the, like, the text-based, like if we click on this, for example, new iPad Pro, you know, it'd be interesting, like, if, so if you're like in a bunker and, and you know, the world was over and you're trying to find where you're going to buy your next $5,000 Mac, if you have this basic old browser, I mean, you, you could kind of stay up to date-ish, right? You could like, oh, well, that's what computers look like now. Interesting. Well, look, they have tablets. What's this little black box with this little candy bar remote? I mean, look at that. Oh, Apple survived and Amiga didn't. Son of a bitch. I mean, you could learn about what's going on in the world and technology through this website. Even though it's not perfect, yes, you can do it. If you were very, very like, I'm not going to install Windows or Mac or Linux. I'm an Amiga only forever. I mean, you could trudge through it here. You're going to have to have one heck of a boosted Amiga. But but I will tell you, the 60060 is definitely chugging along here and getting these pages rendered. So... I don't know if I'd want to be on a 60 to 20 rendering these big pages like this, especially with the, the big images. I mean, it's still going. So I don't know how useful this was for you. This is just my uh, overview of using eyebrows on an Amiga, on an Amiga with lots of memory and a, and a fast processor. And you can see what it's like, at least with um, a basic install. I have I'm, There could be third-party plugins on AmyNet that make life even better browsing on the Amiga. Absolutely, you should check it out. I guess that's it. I think you guys have suffered long enough with me sitting here fumbling around with this. If you're still watching, thank you. And uh, I promise I'll try and uh, do something more exciting next time, maybe. I don't know. I could just, I could just shower for 30 minutes and sing.